Formula One Racing. It is the den of all things fashionable. The trackside luxuries and glamour has been attracting celebrities from its very inception in the 1950s. With the drivers constantly rubbing shoulders with famous Hollywood actors and aristocrats, the sport has almost become synonymous with style, glitz, grease and glamour. Because of which, it is no wonder that the F1 racing suits are some of the most sporty and fashionable outfits in the world. Today, we take a look at the evolution of the F1 racing suit. When Argentina's legendary driver Juan Manuel Fangio ruled the circuit, winning five world championships between 1951 and 57, the idea of a safe fire resistant race suit was yet to be put into practice. It was the 1950s, there were no regulations. Instead, drivers were free to wear pretty much whatever they liked ranging from Sterling Moss's striking overalls to Fangio's racing attire of polo shirts, work jackets and slacks. It seems insane now, even though he looked sharp in it, as does Fangio's lightweight looking headgear. But it did not impede the driver known as El Maestro. Fangio won 24 out of the 51 races he started with a record-breaking win percentage of 46.15%. Did any F1 driver look as cool on the track as three-time world champion Jackie Stewart did in the late 60s and the early 70s? Although he still managed to weave his Scottish pride onto his famous white suit and helmet, the Flying Scot wore a comparatively safer get-up than the previous generation such as Fangio. After a series of fiery accidents across the world of motorsport in the early 60s, fire retardant suits began to be developed. And in 1963, the FIA brought in its first rules regarding fire suits. The Nomex Heat Shield Fire Suit arrived in motorsport after NASCAR's Bill Simpson was introduced to the material by a NASA astronaut, Pete Conrad. The 1970s, Nikki Lauda. In 1975, the FIA introduced standards for the fire retardant suits, but the 1976 crash at the Nürburgring that nearly killed Austria's three-time world champion Niki Lauda and left him badly scarred, highlighted that the cotton driver suit were still too flammable. Drivers and their teams began taking their own safety increasing seriously. A few years later, in 1979, drivers such as Lauda and Mario Andretti were wearing bulky and uncomfortable five-layer suits made to NASA spec. Using the same materials used to make astronaut suits. Ayrton Senna's 1987 race suit, which adheres to FIA's 1986 specifications, is a major piece of F1 history. The Brazilian driver wore the suit as he drove Team Lotus 1990T car to his final ever Grand Prix victory at Monaco and adorned Senna as he took seven podium finishes in a season that signposted his future dominance. This 1987 suit, an eye-popping but way cool yellow, is typical of F1 overalls of the era. When teams and sponsors advertised their brands on suits with patches that added substantial weight and bulk, of course, tobacco sponsorship, then prevalent has been banned since 2006. The 1987 suit Senna wore at his Monaco Triumph, complete with shoulder epaulets, strong enough to pull a driver out of his car along with a seat, was last sold at an auction for $40,000. 
Michael Schumacher influences sport in the two decades like no other driver. The 1990s and 2000s were his. So there is no wonder that he influenced the protection gear as well. Schumacher in conjunction with Schubert helped develop the first lightweight carbon helmet. In 2004, a prototype was publicly tested by being driven over by a tank. A tank. It survived intact for the 2011 Belgian Grand Prix. Schumacher's 20th anniversary in Formula 1, he wore a commemorative gold leaf helmet and in 2012, for his 300th appearance, he wore a platinum leafed one. His was about the last generation before the game changed one more time to evolve into its current form. Lewis Hamilton has staked his claim to be the greatest driver of his generation by winning six championships. Far no length he won't go to gain that fraction of a second on his opponent, including changing the material of the zipper on his suit. And a zipper puller was too heavy, said Puma's head of motorsport. The weight of an F1 race suit has been cut from 1.5 kg to 700 grams. The elastic was removed, logos were printed rather than stitched into fabric. Each one requires between 2 to 8 hours of labor depending on the brief. And Puma calculates that 80% of the suits are totally bespoke, with raw materials alone costing £2,000 for each. It appears that no area is immune to the fierce, constant evolution that dominates top flight motorsport. As the sport is constantly evolving, it makes every aspect farther than its predecessors, sometimes even making it unrecognizable.